G'day everyone, how's it going? <laughs> G'day Lucy Boy Games, hello, welcome. Hey Marcus, great to see everybody live today. Just double testing my microphone, double checking to see everything is working. Can you guys hear me? Just double checking, okay, excellent. Things are looking good. All right. Just making sure everything is all set up. All right. G'day, everybody. Welcome to another live Steam podcast. My name is Mr. Code, and today we are going to do a live test of this. It's a Light B Lego compatible uh, educational drone. And we're going to see if we can pair it up with some uh, Lego education. We do two robotics as well. So I'm really get, uh, excited about this session because ever since I built Lego robots, I've always wanted a way to make Lego fly. So this is going to be a good opportunity to get it working. And please note that this session is not sponsored by Lego or Lightbee. Uh, I bought all of this equipment myself and uh, all of these opinions are my own. So if you have any questions or suggestions on the robots or the experiments that we can do, then make sure you use the chat panel, okay? So type in your suggestions in the chat. I'll read it every now and again uh, during the lesson, and then I'll pick out some of the suggestions that you give me, uh, and we can do some experiments together, okay? So let's have a look at this drone. Can you see up close on this camera? You can sort of see uh, um, uh, what this drone looks like. So it's this quadcopter style drone. And uh, it's got um, uh, these uh, pairs of rotors uh, uh, positioned on the corners. And the cool thing about this light bee drone is that there are these uh, connector studs and holes uh, positioned around the body so that you can customize this drone with Lego parts. Uh, and that's really, really interesting because then you can uh, theoretically increase or decrease uh, the length of the arms, for example. Uh, you can also customize it like I have, like added some eyes and this flower on top of this drone. Um, this drone actually has a few different flight modes. Uh, the one that we're going to use today is this manual flight mode using this um, radio transmitter. But there's also a programming, uh, a programmable drive um, flight mode where you can give it some fixed instructions and even give it some automated um, pathways, which is really exciting. We're going to do that next week. So if you haven't already, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel so that you get the alert when we come live again with the next Lightbee drone um, demonstration. All right, so let's let's try working this drone. Let's do, do a very quick flight just to see how it works, okay? All right, let's have a look at this. Excellent, we got a bunch of people already starting to talk to each other in the live chat, which is fantastic. All right, let's uh, get this working with a drone flight. All right, so now I am positioned nice and safely away from my drone, and uh, I'm gonna see if I can give it a little bit of a spin, all right? Whoa. So it flies really well, it's very agile. I'm a very bad pilot though. So you can see it can pitch and roll in all different directions. You can also go up and down. And it can land as well. Okay. Very cool. Have we got any uh, interesting questions coming from the audience yet? Nope. 
That's great. So make sure that you type in your questions in the chat if you have any questions, okay? So how does this quadcopter work? You can see that it moves very, very quickly. Um, it can fly and uh, take off and land and it can roll, uh, which is to move to the left and right. And also it can pitch and yaw as well. So it can move forward and back and it can also twist on the spot, which is a very complicated set of maneuvers uh, for an aircraft. So let's have a look and see how a drone works. Hold on for a second, just getting things sorted. Cool, so to understand how a multi-rotor drone works, uh, we have to understand why, why the quad rotor design uh, exists uh, in the first place. And in order to do that, uh, it's best to first have a look at uh, one of the most popular kind of uh, similar aircraft, which is a helicopter. So you see here that we have uh, a helicopter. And normally with a helicopter, we have a single main rotor, which is this middle part of the rotor with the four big blades in the middle. Uh, and that spins around to generate lift to send that helicopter up into the air. However, due to Newton's third law of motion, uh, that every action has an equal and opposite reaction, that means that if the rotor blades are spinning clockwise, that means that at the same time, it is exerting um, an anti-clockwise force on the body of the helicopter. Well, in this case, the rotors are spinning anti-clockwise, so that is exerting a clockwise force on the body of the helicopter. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if I just uh, have this helicopter take off with the main rotor blades, then eventually the body of the helicopter is going to spin uh, and gradually increase in speed and spin out of control. So the way that we counter this is with something called a tail rotor. You can see at the bottom of this helicopter, the back of this helicopter, there is a tiny little rotor blade that is switched at 90 degrees on the plane. And what, happened, uh, what happens is that this tail rotor actually uh, compensates for that natural rotation of that helicopter's body. And uh, this tail rotor also helps that helicopter um, change heading. So if I wanted to turn towards the left or turn towards the right, then this tail rotor is going to be able to help us by increasing or decreasing that torque to twist that helicopter uh, side to side. But then for a helicopter, we also need it to maneuver. We also need this helicopter to move forward and back. And that's really complicated because in order for the helicopter to move forward and back, we need to change the pitch of the blades that are on the main rotor. And how does that look like? Let's have a look at this. So if you have a look at a close-up of a helicopter's rotor blades, it's very complicated. And the reason is because um, uh, the helicopter only has the one motor and it uses something called a swash plate uh, to change the helicopter's pitch and roll. Okay. These vertical links, they attach to each of the rotor blades and uh, it determines how much lift each blade is going to give that helicopter as that helicopter blade passes through a certain point of rotation. So this makes a helicopter design much more complex to operate and uh, this is why a lot of drones they would prefer this multi-rotor design because each rotor of a multi-rotor aircraft uh, does not require uh, such complexity as this uh, helicopter's main rotor system. If you look at a quad rotor drone from the top down, then you'll see that the rotors are actually spinning in opposite directions of each other. So these diagonal rotors are spinning in the same direction and then the other diagonal are spinning in the opposite direction. So here we got motors one and four spinning in the clockwise direction and motors two and three are spinning in the anti-clockwise direction. All right. And this is important because this is what keeps our drone from spinning out of control. 
And it is also the reason why these quadcopters don't have a tail rotor like a helicopter, because the way that we um, stop the spin is through um, uh, this counter rotation. For a quadcopter, if I wanted to increase its altitude, uh, increase its height, we just have to increase the strength of all four motors. And if I want to decrease in height or decrease in altitude, then I do the opposite. I decrease the power of all four motors. But what if I want to move forward and backward and left and right? Well, that's really simple. So unlike a helicopter, all we have to do is change the power of the motors in the direction of which we want to tilt or roll. So if I want to move forward, then we just have to power down the motors that are at the front of the aircraft. If I want to move back, then I have to decrease the power at the back of my aircraft. So decrease the, rotor, uh, the speeds of the rotor blades at the back of the aircraft. If I want to roll to the left, then I decrease the power of my left motors. If I want to roll to the right, then I decrease the power of my right motors. So you can see that it's, it's very simple, right? It's a, a lot simpler than a helicopter. But now we have a problem, okay? So uh, with a helicopter, we can change heading really easily. We can change the, the yaw angle of the helicopter simply by uh, increasing or decreasing the power of our tail rotor. Yeah, so our tail rotor that was compensating for the spin, it's uh, also uh, helping us uh, do turns towards the left and right. However, for a drone, it is slightly different. If we want to turn to the left or change our heading in the anti-clockwise direction, then what we do is we slow down the motors that are turning in the anti-clockwise direction. Because what that does is that decreases that counter torque, the, the countering force that is naturally turning our helicopter towards the right hand side. So if we decrease the, um, the power of uh, motors two and three, like on this uh, screen here, then there's no longer as much countering force to turn our, hel uh, our uh, quad drone towards the right. So now it is heading towards the left. If I want to turn towards the right, then I do the opposite. So I decrease the power of motors one and four. And what that does is it decreases the, uh, the counter torque of motors two and three, and that natural force is going to turn it towards the right hand side. Okay, so that is how uh, a drone works. It's actually uh, super elegant how how these quadcopters are designed because that means that to do all the different ranges of movement, all the different maneuvers, all we have to do is increase and decrease the power of the various motors around the aircraft. And it's the same if you have a six uh, six rotor drone or a or an eight rotor drone. Uh, the principle is exactly the same. All right, let's have a look, see if we can answer any questions like um, uh, like any questions to do with the drones in our chat. Airfoils are cool. Yes, that's right. So uh, a few notes uh, were say, talking about the airfoils in the chat. So every single um, rotor blade uh, on a drone is an example of an airfoil, which is causing this um, this difference in air pressure above and below the drone so that it forces the drone up into the air. Fantastic. Uh, let's have a look at these other questions as well. No problem. Looks like everybody is happy. Okay, make sure that you type in your questions in the chat if you have any and then I will revisit them during this quick lesson. All right. Okay, so now we are going to start doing some experiments because this is the fun part, right? We are going to start um, attaching or incorporating some Lego parts into our drone. So uh, you've already seen how I have decorated the drone, right? And that's honestly, that's probably the best part of 
uh, of this drone is that you can uh, add different pieces to um, customize it, make it your own, change its color, uh, add some uh, personality to your drone. But our first design is going to also incorporate We Do 2, which is the Lego version of the uh, Junior Robotics Kit. And what is it going to look like? Let me show you. Okay, so this is our first design. This is the first design called Checkpoint. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to use We Do 2 to build a racing checkpoint. So the idea is that we can have several of these, um, uh, these checkpoints spread throughout a racetrack. And then they can be used as a timer or a counter for each time a drone flies past. Okay, I'm not sure how, how far that range is on this checkpoint, but we're going to give it a try anyway and see if we can get it working. So let's uh, have a have a test and hope I don't crash. Okay, hold on for a second. Okay, let's have a look. So here's my checkpoint robot. I'm going to go into We Do 2, connect it up. And if you have any questions, um, make sure you post it into the chat. Excellent. So we got how far can the drone fly? Ex that's a really good question. So, uh, I honestly don't know. I'm going to have to test it out uh, in a moment. But uh, once I find out, I will post it into the uh, comments, okay? Uh, because the, uh, I'm flying indoors right now. We couldn't go outside, but uh, I will have to uh, test that out for you, okay? That's an excellent question. Thanks very much for that. We have just programmed the um, checkpoint robot here. So when we press this play button, uh, it's going to start a counter. And every time that counter detects, uh, I mean, this checkpoint robot detects a change in distance, then it's going to increase the counter by one and make a beep as well. So let's test it out here. So if I put my hand across it, right? All right, you get the picture. So this robot is designed to be placed on like a racetrack and then you fly your drones over it so that we can calculate how many times it is uh, flying over. So let's try that with our drone, see if it's possible because maybe it's uh, like, if the drone's flying too far ahead, it's not going to work. So it's going to have a try. All right, it's a good question. Let's have a look at this. <laughs> I forgot to turn on the checkpoint. Okay, hold on for a second. Hmm, it looks like checkpoints now. Ah, oh, here we go. Yes, it is working. Here we go. All right, checkpoint is live. Let's see if I can fly the drone past the checkpoint. Yes. Yes. Oh, it's starting to lose control. Yes. Three times. Oh, it's about to crash. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Is, uh, I'm not sure if, uh, if it's lagging for you guys. Is it lagging?
<laughs> All right. So it looks like So it looks like the uh We Do 2 is causing a little bit of a lag in my uh in my footage. So I'm going to have to turn We Do 2 off for a little bit. Okay. So um what happened there was that uh we flew the drone past the checkpoint uh about three times and uh it caused the um uh the we do to counter to increase at each time so uh there was some sort of issue with i think the um the uh we do to and the camera lag so uh, i'm just going to do a one more test flight to see if i can uh get a smoother flight i mean uh, get smoother footage from the camera Okay, so it looks like we do too was causing a little bit of issue with our drone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a second computer to load we do too onto that, and then I'll come back to my testing. Okay, so do not go anywhere. I'm just going to get things uh, sorted. Let's have a look. Mm. All right, hold on for a second. That was a little bit of... Uh, so I'm going to get a second computer just so that I can do that again. And uh, because I don't want you guys to, to see like a laggy footage. That's, that's, not, that's not ideal. All right. Okay, I'm going to run the same code on this computer. And then we're going to run that test again. So we're going to wait until it's a change in distance. And then we increase the count and then we make a sound. Okay. All right. This should work now. Let's hope I don't crash into the computer. That would be unfortunate. All right. Are we ready? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it works. 
<laughs> it works. <laughs> All right. How is everyone going? Okay, so that <laughs> so that is checkpoint. Okay, so the checkpoint robot is designed to be placed in uh, different parts of the uh, racetrack, or you can have some sort of obstacle course, and then you can uh, get your students or your friends to fly your drone and try to get past that checkpoint, and make that beep sound so that the um, the scoring counter will increase. Okay. Any questions, make sure you post it into the chat. All right, let's have a look at our next design. Our next design is going to be called Firefly. Now, remember, uh, drones need to be as light as possible, okay, in order to fly well. And with this design, with Firefly, we are adding a whole WeDo2 hub onto the drone. It's going to double the weight of the drone. Yeah, it's actually m more than double the, the weight of the drone. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's going to fly, but if it does, then the distance sensor is designed to uh, sound an alarm if the dry drone flies too close to an obstacle. Okay, so uh, I hope it works. I'm not sure if it's going to work properly, but uh, maybe you can post your predictions in the chat. Is it going to work or not? We're doubling the, we remember, we're doubling the, the weight of the drone. So I'm going to go and uh, build Firefly like this, and then we'll have a look. How light is the drone? Um, I will get you the, uh, the specifications for that, but actually if um, uh, I will, um, yeah, I will answer that uh, towards the end, okay? All right, let's have a look. Okay, now we have uh, built Checkpoint, now, I mean, uh, sorry, uh, Firefly. So Firefly has a whole other WeDo2 hub uh, sitting on top of the Lightbeat drone. It is doubling the weight, okay? And uh, I've also programmed it so that if it gets too close to the wall, then you're going to see the counter increase and it's going to make a sound. All right, so um, let's see how well it flies. It might not fly, but let's see if, uh, if it's got enough power. Oh my goodness, you see that? Whoa. <laughs> it 
it flew. <laughs> but but if you watch very closely, the um, the drone flies really well if you're not moving it. But as soon as I try to change its direction, uh, it starts to lose altitude because uh, remember what we learned about before. A, a drone uh, relies on decreasing motor speeds and increasing the motor speeds um, of different motors in order to change its direction and to um, uh, to maneuver. So if I didn't have to move around, it can fly up and down very, very well. It flies, actually it flew very high. Uh, but as soon as I need to move around and change its direction, that's when the um, uh, the, the, the mass of the, of the drone shifts and it's harder for it to compensate. Let's try that one more time. Uh, but this time I want to put on a tilt sensor. Uh, so it's going to be Firefly with a tilt sensor and I'm going to see if I can change the light color of the hub uh, for each different direction that I tilt, okay? Okay, maybe need to change the balance of the total weight. I think that is a great, great idea. Uh, but we are trying to just see, just stress test it a little bit, just give it a little bit of weight. But actually, uh, that's a really good point. Uh, what um, uh, what Ricky's saying is that um, maybe we can change the the center of the mass uh, to be slightly lower than the propellers, and that. That actually, we'll, have, we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, that's actually probably the key to making it more stable. But let's see if we can fly now with a Lego hub and also one sensor, okay? Oh, you hear the motor screaming. So it's flying very well, like considering we've doubled Double the, the, the strength, double the uh, mass. Whoops! I'm landed on the ground. It's okay. <laughs> So that is probably the maximum, maximum um, uh, total weight that we can add onto this drone. So a Lego hub, a We Do Two hub, plus a sensor. Uh, adding, adding any more is probably going to uh, cause it to, to uh, not be able to take off very well. Because you can see just from uh, adding the sensor and uh, the hub, uh, already, uh, I can fly really well if I'm hovering, 
But as soon as I try to change direction and some of the motors need to decrease in strength, that's when uh, it's going to start losing balance. But I know everybody wants to ask this. What if I put another motor on the, on the drone, right? What if I put a hub and just one more motor? I know everyone wants to put a motor on the drone because imagine if we can put a motor on the drone, then we can make like a shooting robot, we can make like a, a crane lifting robot. Uh, we can do all sorts of cool stuff, right? With, a, with, a, um, uh, with an additional motor. So I present you our final design, which is windmill. Okay, <laughs> this windmill is going to be extremely heavy. This is about three times the, the weight of our um, uh, light bead drone. So we're going to put on a Lego hub and we're also going to put on a motor. Uh, and it's probably not going to fly very high, if it's going to fly at all. But we'll, we'll, we'll still give it a try. We'll still give it a try. All right, who thinks that this one is going to, um, who thinks that this one is going to fly? Who thinks it's not going to fly? Well, I think it's going to be very difficult for this one to fly, but I'll try it anyway. Oh, oh, it's flying, it's flying, it's flying. It's <laughs> It sort of flew. It sort of flew, right? Let's let's try that one more time. Oh no, you guys didn't see it. You guys didn't see it. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, I just saw the chat, but we're gonna do it again. We're gonna do it again. We are going to do this again. Uh, and we're going to try and fly it, okay? <laughs> I didn't change the camera for you. Okay, all right, watch this. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so it sort of flew. It sort of flew a little bit, but uh, it's not flying high. I'm going to try and do it one more time. All right, so it doesn't doesn't fly, okay. <laughs> but it was still cool, right? It was still cool, and that's the most important thing: is that this these these drones are still really really cool. <laughs> Have we got any questions? Am I? 
We want to see. Okay. <laughs> okay. No problem. Yeah. So um, that looks like that's the that's the limit of how much weight you can put on these drones. Okay. So as you can see, um, the the maneuverability of uh, this quad rotor design lies in the fact that uh, everything can be controlled by simply changing the power of each motor. Uh, and this is the crucial reason as to why quadcopters are, are favored for drones, because they're, they're very easy to operate compared to a helicopter, which uh, is very complex uh, in its main rotor. And uh, why is it that a quadcopter can carry so little weight? So the truth is that all aircraft uh, try to carry as little weight as possible uh, in order to increase its flight performance. Uh, and they are constantly fighting with gravity, right? If you're in the air, gravity is constantly pulling you down. So in order to fight against gravity, you need to uh, make yourself as light as possible, right? And for a quadcopter, uh, this is even more important because any kind of maneuver will uh, require a significant trade-off in lift because some of the motors will need to decrease in power while the other ones increase, right? So that's why uh, when the quadcopter is simply flying straight up and down, we're using the full power of all the motors. But as soon as I try to move the quadcopter around, it starts to lose the benefit of those multiple uh, rotors. All right, so we've done our test flights. And to me, I feel like the, the motors are, are, are just powerful enough for you to add some Lego decorations, which is great because then uh, the kids can uh, have um, a personalized drone, you can add some uh, different colors or eyes and uh, decorations on it uh, to give character to those drones. And adding We Do Too is going to be hard because um, you're going to have to keep to using the hub and maybe a sensor. Uh, and the, the, the reason is because the We Do Too hub is actually just too heavy uh, to, to make practical. But uh, just because the flight time is not very high, it doesn't mean that it's not fun. It's still a, a great way to uh, learn about science uh, activities. Uh, I, I wish the bottom of the drone had some connectors as well, because it would be nice to be able to um, add pieces of Lego to the bottom of the drone instead of on the top, because uh, that way you can keep it more naturally stable. Right? If you lower the center of gravity uh, on the drone, then you can make it a little bit more stable and doesn't um, uh, fly out of control as likely. Uh, although any adding any kind of weight to the Lego is going, I mean, to the drone is going to uh, make it a little bit less stable. You want to see the checkpoint again? Okay, that sounds good. We're going to try that again then. <laughs> uh, and um, what else I wish uh, we could do with the um, the drone is other than adding like connections to the bottom of the drone is I wish that we could uh, have different propeller options as well. If we can have like uh, triple or quad uh, propellers, um, maybe it can change the, the flight performance of the drone. Maybe it can make it faster or, or, or stronger, but I, I don't know. I haven't done any experiments on it yet. Um, so we're going to look at some of these um, uh, examples. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do checkpoint again, because checkpoint seems to be really... Uh, uh, really successful for us. <laughs> so I'm just going to set it up again. If you have any other suggestions on how we can, uh, what experiments you want to do for the drone, make sure you type it out in the chat while I'm doing the checkpoint uh, experiment again, okay?
Okay, let's try this uh, checkpoint drone again. Let's do it five times. Oh, I don't think I've done any better piloting before. And that this drone actually flew quite a while, right? We've done a few, a few flights with it. Most drones, they only fly maybe two or three minutes, um, especially with larger drones like these. Uh, they, they don't fly for as long. And especially with these batteries, these are rechargeable batteries that, um, that charge by USB as well. So, um, uh, this this is flying a lot longer than I expected and we haven't had to recharge this battery uh, For this particular drone yet. Although I did I did have a, a three different drones today. So I had this one checkpoint uh, and then we had the uh, uh, Firefly and, and the other the other windmill one. <laughs> Is it possible to have a drone base on spike prime? You know what? That's an excellent question. Um, I think you would need a really big drone to fly the Spike Prime drone. Uh, you would need uh, one of the bigger ones that can hold, uh, that are designed to hold cameras, maybe that, that kind of uh, power in order to, um, to, to fly one with Spike Prime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, these ones are probably a bit too small for it, but if uh, uh, maybe Makerfire can make a, um, uh, a bigger drone <laughs> that can fly Spike Prime? Mm, that's an excellent question. All right. I'll, gra I'll grab the, the drone back in a moment. I'll see if there's um, any weight specification on the on this drone. Mm, it doesn't... I don't think there's any... I don't think it um, it says how how heavy it is, but uh, if once I find out how heavy the drone is, I'll put post it onto the description so you can uh, see it uh, afterwards in the video. Okay, cool. Well done, guys. So uh, doesn't look like there are any more suggestions on our chat. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, my wacky experimental flying robots <laughs> featuring we do too and light B wing uh, As you can see the light B motors are, are very powerful uh, But if you want to add Lego onto it, then you'll probably need to focus on the decorations uh, the decorative elements uh, and at most you can add a we do too hub and one sensor either the tilt sensor or the uh, motion sensor, uh, which is actually already a huge surprise to me because uh, I thought for sure that the drone wouldn't be able to fly with that sort of configuration. But it's a pleasant surprise. And if you're in Australia, you can visit our website. Uh, the link is in the description and you can purchase the Lightbee drone for yourself or your school as well. Okay, uh, And uh, they are fun, easy and uh, packed full of learning opportunities. So make sure you check back again next week where we're going to demonstrate the light b wing drone with cargo delivery system okay we're going to program it with scratch and then we're going to show our drone uh, how to fly by itself without a human like myself piloting the drone okay uh, i hope you guys had fun and i'll see you again later okay bye bye